transport is active transport which is a type of transport that requires energy it requires energy because the molecules move from a region of lower concentration to a region of higher concentration that is it is against the electrochemical gradient or concentration gradient it is also known as uphill movement like just imagine climbing up the stairs or climbing up a hill we put much effort or we require energy for that movement likewise active transport since it is um, the transport of molecules from a region of lower to higher concentration energy is definitely required now since it is against the electrochemical gradient carrier proteins are essential or carrier proteins should be of help for the movement of molecules and there are three types of carrier proteins they are uniport that carries one molecule in one direction symport that carries two or more molecules in the same direction and antiport that carries two or more molecules in the opposite direction this picture shows the three types of carrier proteins now in passive transport or to be more specific in facilitated diffusion we saw the action of carrier proteins for the movement of molecules so here comes a similarity between active transport and facilitated diffusion that is the use of carrier proteins but there are two major differences between active transport and facilitated diffusion the first difference is that in active transport the movement of molecules is from lower to higher concentration that is it is against the electrochemical or concentration gradient whereas facilitated diffusion is along the concentration gradient it is the movement of molecules from a region of higher to lower concentration the second difference is that the carrier protein of active transport require energy for the movement of molecules but the carrier protein of facilitated diffusion does not require energy these two are the major differences between active transport and facilitated diffusion active transport is divided into two types as primary active transport and secondary active transport primary active transport is also called direct active transport as it uses direct energy for moving molecules across the membrane example for primary active transport is sodium potassium pump this pump uses atp directly for the movement of molecules whereas in secondary active transport the movement of molecules is with the energy that is produced or stored by primary active transport that is it in uses indirect energy for the movement of molecules that is why it is called indirect transport like for example the energy used by sodium potassium pump will be used as a driving force for the movement of some other molecules across the membrane about which we'll be discussing in the later part of this video it is of two types secondary active transport is of two types co transport and counter transport co transport is the transport of two or more molecules together and counter transport is the transport of two or more molecules in the opposite direction so coming to the sodium potassium pump which is a very important pump in our body that helps to maintain the sodium and potassium concentration differences across the cell membrane maintains the cell volume and is also called the electrogenic pump because it causes negative charge inside the cell so in this picture you can see that three sodium ions are moving to the outer side of the membrane and two potassium ions are moving towards the inner side of the membrane so this is how this pump works it removes sodium ions from the inner to the 
external side of the cell and it takes in potassium ions from outer to the inner side of the cell. So while doing this type of movement energy will be used that is ATP will be used. In this picture you can see four parts. In the first one you can see three sodium ions attached to the inner side of the carrier protein. In the next picture you can see one ATP attached to the lower part of the carrier protein and sodium ions being expelled to the exterior. Then in the third one you can see two potassium ions attached to the inner side of the carrier protein and in the lower part you can see one phosphate attached to the carrier protein and ADP being removed. And in the last picture you can see potassium ions being expelled to the interior of the cell. So this is how that pump works that is the pump is open to the inner side of the membrane and so it attracts or it likes to bind with sodium ions. So three sodium ions attached to it and what happens next is the ATP that is present on the lower part of that pump it gets hydrolyzed that is it gets broken down into ADP and inorganic phosphate. The ADP will be released but inorganic phosphate will be attached to the lower part of the carrier protein which you can see the third picture and this attachment of phosphate which is called phosphorylation changes the shape of the pump reorienting itself so that it opens to the exterior of the cell it opens to the external space and when this carrier protein faces the external part of the membrane the sodium ions which is attached to the inner side will be released to the external part or to the external area of the cell. Then now the carrier protein is facing towards the external side of the cell and so it switches its affinity towards potassium ions. So more potassium ions will be attracted towards this carrier protein and two potassium ions bind to the inner side of this carrier protein. Now what happens is that the uh, phosphate group that was attached to this carrier protein, lower part of this carrier protein gets removed and upon removal of this phosphate group the pump changes its shape to its original one moves to the inter internal or interior side of the cell and releases K plus ions into the cell. Now the membrane also now the carrier protein does not like the binding of potassium ions so it releases potassium to the interior of the cell and now the cycle again repeats. Once again if any sodium ions are present inside the cell they will attach to this interior part of the carrier protein it changes its shape and moves to the external part opening to the external part the phosphate group gets attached ADP will be released thereby producing energy and with this energy or with this breaking down of ATP to ADP and inorganic phosphate sodium and potassium ions will be transported across the membrane against their concentration gradient because sodium ions are of greater number outside the cell and potassium ions are of greater number inside the cell. So it is against the concentration gradient and accordingly this pump works to remove sodium to the exterior and to take K plus to the interior of the cell. Then coming to co-transport that is the transport of two or more molecules together to the interior of the cell or to the exterior of the cell and the most common type of co-transport is sodium glucose co-transport. 
sodium glucose sim porter transport because here sodium and glucose are transported together to the interior of the cell so previously through sodium potassium pump sodium is already released to the exterior of the cell and with that energy produced during sodium potassium movement or produced by the sodium potassium pump with that energy sodium as well as glucose gets attached to the pump that is sim porter and that sim porter carries sodium and glucose to the interior side of the cell so together they are transported that is why it is called secondary active transport so a uh, glucose always moves into the interior of the cell along with sodium ions only that is why it is called co transport here you can see initially sodium potassium pump creates an ion gradient and that ion gradient stimulates the sodium uh, glucose sim porter loading sodium and glucose on the carrier protein and both of them are transported to the interior side of the cell once again the sodium that is now present inside the cell will be transported back to the outer side of the cell through another sodium potassium pump and it's how the cycle repeats the next is counter transport counter transport is the transport of two or more molecules in the opposite direction here also sodium calcium transport or sodium h plus transport are the major co -tra uh, counter transport mechanisms so when sodium is taken inside calcium or h plus ions will be given outside of the cell and that movement is also taking place after the sodium potassium pump has already take, uh, done its work and energy is produced then comes the special types of transport also called vesicular transport and there are of three types endocytosis exocytosis and transcytosis endocytosis is also called cell drinking process where cell takes up particles that are too large to be transported actively or passively and the stages of endocytosis are the particle makes contact with the cell membrane the cell membrane invaginates and the invagination gets pinched off leaving the cell membrane intact so this is how endosmosis takes place sorry endocytosis takes place the particles initially make contact with the cell then they form a small vesicle or vacuole like structure which is taken into the interior of the cell and an example for endocytosis is phagocytosis which is the taking in of foreign bodies by the cell and they will be digested or they will be destroyed like the bacteria or viruses they are taken into the cell and they are destroyed to form a phagosome the next comes exocytosis which is also called cell spitting as the cell releases its content to the exterior the stages of exocytosis are just the opposite of endocytosis materials to be extruded are enveloped in a sac like structure the plasma membrane and material membrane fuses together releasing the material to the exterior of the cell this is exocytosis just the opposite of endocytosis initially the materials that are to be extruded out of the cell they form a small vesicle then the vesicle moves to the membrane of the cell and the two membranes fuse together thereby releasing the contents to the exterior of the cell so this is endocytosis and exocytosis shown together 
so in endocytosis the materials to be taken in uh, form a contact with the cell membrane they form a small vesicle and it will be taken to the interior side and in exocytosis vesicle will be initially formed inside the cell and then the vesicular membrane and the membrane of the cell fuses together to release the contents to the exterior and the last type is transcytosis that is the transport of various macromolecules across the interior of the cell macromolecules are taken in as vesicles through one side of the cell and ejected to the through the other side blood capillaries are well known for site of transcytosis this is transcytosis the material are first taken inside in the form of vesicles then they are released to the subendothelial space so these are the three types of special transport mechanisms and with this we come to an end of this topic so thank you